33 AD. Forty days after his resurrection, Jesus Christ ascends into heaven. He leaves behind 11 apostles, commissioning them to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There were only 500 disciples in the world, all of them located in the remote Roman province of Judea. This is the story of how the gospel spread from 500 disciples in Jerusalem to the whole world. Nine days after the ascension, the day of Pentecost, the twelve apostles are praying together with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Suddenly the Holy Spirit descends upon them, and Peter preaches to the people of Jerusalem. Three thousand people are converted. The church is born. People from all across the known world are present in Jerusalem to hear Peter's speech. In Acts 8, Philip, while in Gaza, shares the gospel with the eunuch of the royal court of Ethiopia. The eunuch believes the gospel and is baptized. He returns to Ethiopia to spread the good news. Philip continues his preaching in Caesarea Maritima on the Mediterranean coast. In Acts 11, persecuted disciples in Jerusalem flee as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, where they spread the gospel. Antioch is the third largest city in the Roman Empire after Rome and Alexandria. In Acts 13 and 14, Paul and Barnabas spread the gospel in Cyprus, Pamphylia and southern Galatia. Following the Council of Jerusalem in Acts 15, Paul sets out on his second missionary journey from Antioch, preaching the gospel in his native Cilicia before moving on to Macedonia and Greece. On his return home, he visits Ephesus, the largest city in the Roman province of Asia in modern-day Turkey, and the fourth largest city in the Roman Empire. In Acts 18-21, Paul sets out from Antioch to visit the churches he had established across Galatia, Asia, Macedonia and Greece before returning to Jerusalem. In Acts 27, Paul is taken under guard by Roman soldiers from Judea to Rome. After leaving Crete, the ship is lost to a storm, but miraculously lands at Malta in Acts 28, from where Paul makes his final journey to Rome. The narrative history of the Bible ends in Acts 28 with Paul teaching the faith in Rome. Tradition tells us of the journeys of the other apostles. St. James, the older brother of John the Evangelist, preaches the gospel in Spain. He returns to Jerusalem where, in Acts 12, he is run through with the sword by Herod Agrippa. Philip spreads the gospel in Asia, where he is crucified upside down. Bartholomew travels to India. After sharing the gospel there, he travels to the kingdom of Armenia, the location of Mount Ararat, where he is skinned alive and beheaded. Thomas, who doubted the resurrection of Jesus, preaches in the kingdoms of Osirene and Armenia before traveling to India, where he preaches in Punjab and Mylapore. He is stabbed to death by Hindu priests near Madras. Matthew stays in Palestine, where he writes his gospel in Hebrew. He eventually moves to Ethiopia, where he is martyred. Simon and Jude preach in Tessaphon, capital of the Parthian Empire, where they are said to convert 60,000 believers before returning to Suanair, modern-day Beirut in Syria, where they are martyred. Matthias, who was chosen to replace the Apostle Judas, evangelizes Armenia and the north shore of the Black Sea. He returns to Jerusalem and is stoned to death. Saint James the Just stays in Jerusalem and prays in the temple every day. Finally, an angry mob throws him off the top of the temple and stones and clubs him to death. Shortly thereafter, Jerusalem revolts against the Roman Empire. The armies of Vespasian march on Jerusalem and completely destroy it, including the temple, in 70 AD. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, spreads the gospel as far north as Crimea and present-day Ukraine, before preaching in Byzantium, present-day Constantinople, and finally arriving at the city of Patras in the province of Achaia, present-day Greece, where he is crucified on an X-shaped cross, as he deemed himself unworthy to be crucified on the same type of cross as Jesus. 
Simon Peter leaves Jerusalem following the council in Acts 15 and becomes the first bishop of Antioch, where he stays for eight years. He then preaches in Asia before arriving in Rome. Simon Magus, who in Acts 8 had attempted to buy the gift of laying on hands, follows Peter in his travels across the world, performing magic tricks to convince people that he, not Jesus, is the true saviour. Simon Magus teaches his followers that he is the true God who had revealed himself as the Father in Samaria, the Son in Judea, and now the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles. Simon Magus becomes known as the father of all heretics, those who try to lead the faithful astray from the sound teaching of Simon Peter. Simon Magus also taught that his followers would be saved by grace alone without the need for good works, because in his teaching, the designation of works as good or bad was an arbitrary construct invented by fallen angels. At Rome, Simon Peter and Simon Magus are brought before Emperor Nero. While the Apostle Paul prays for Simon Peter, Simon Magus performs a magic trick where he is lifted into the air by demons. However, Simon Peter commands the demons to release him, and Simon Magus falls to his death. Simon Peter sends his disciple, Mark the Evangelist, to Alexandria, Egypt, the second largest city in the world. Mark becomes Alexandria's first bishop. Emperor Nero blames Christians for the Great Fire of Rome in the year 64 and slaughters the Christians in Rome. The apostles Peter and Paul are martyred. Peter is crucified upside down on Vatican Hill because he deems himself unworthy to be crucified in the same manner as Jesus. Saint John the Evangelist is thrown into a cauldron of boiling oil in Rome, but is unharmed. He is then banished to the island of Patmos, where he receives the vision of Revelation. After he is released from exile, Saint John resides in Ephesus. His last words are said to be, Little children, love one another. The apostles established churches throughout the Mediterranean world, led by the three Petrine Seas of Rome, Alexandria, and Antioch. From these seas, missionaries spread the gospel to the whole world. Carthage in North Africa, along with Gaul and England, were converted by missionaries from Rome. After the apostles die, their disciples, known as the Apostolic Fathers, continue to lead the church. Around the year 90, Pope Clement I of Rome writes to the Church of Corinth, rebuking certain instigators who had rebelled against the church's presbyters. Ignatius, Patriarch of Antioch, is condemned to be fed to beasts in the Colosseum in Rome early in the second century. On his journey, he writes letters to churches throughout the Mediterranean, encouraging them in the faith. Saint Polycarp, Bishop of Smyrna, in Asia near Ephesus, was a disciple of Saint John the Evangelist. He was cast into a fire in 155. When the fire failed to harm him, he was run through with a sword. The second century would see the successors of the Apostles seek not only to justify Christianity against arguments from a skeptical Greek world, but also rebuke heretics who sought to teach a distorted, twisted version of the Gospel. Valentinus attempted to lead astray the churches at Alexandria and Rome. Valentinus taught that only his disciples who received a special type of secret knowledge, called Gnosis, would achieve true spiritual salvation. Marcion came to Rome shortly after Valentinus and attempted to persuade Christians that the God of the Old Testament was not the same as the God of the New Testament. Marcion taught that the God of the Old Testament was an evil being called the Demiurge, and that the Demiurge had created the physical world as a prison for souls who had fallen from the pure spiritual world. Marcion taught that the true God had sent an enlightened spirit, Jesus Christ, in the appearance of a human to rescue fallen souls from the corrupt physical world and lead them into a pure non-physical spiritual world. The teaching that Jesus was a divine spirit without a real human body became known as Docetism. Justin Martyr was born in Samaria. After studying philosophy, he was converted to Christianity by an old man along the seashore. He then travelled through Asia, answering objections to Christianity raised by Jews and Greeks, and refuting the teachings of Martion. He finally came to Rome, where during the reign of Marcus Aurelius, he was denounced by Cynic philosopher Crescens. Justin was beheaded in Rome in the year 168. 
Irenaeus of Leon was a disciple of Polycarp who had been taught directly by St. John the Evangelist. After learning the faith from Polycarp, Irenaeus travelled from Asia to Gaul, where he became Bishop of Leon. He wrote a grand treatise against the Gnostic system of Valentinus, against heresies, which is still preserved to this day. The three largest cities in the Roman Empire were Rome, Alexandria and Antioch. These cities had authority over their patriarchates, which in the case of Rome included all of the Western Roman Empire, Italy, Africa, Illyricum and Achaea. Alexandria had authority over Egypt, and Antioch had authority over churches in the Middle East. The bishops of Rome and Alexandria took the title of Pope, while the bishop of Antioch took the title of Patriarch. These bishops based their authority on direct succession from the Apostle Peter, who was bishop at Antioch for eight years, sent his disciple Mark the Evangelist to Alexandria as its first bishop, and finally gave his life for the faith at Rome. Administration of church governance was further subdivided among larger regional cities. The bishops of the largest cities were called exarchs, while the bishops of smaller regional cities were called metropolitans, who had supervision over bishops in their surrounding areas. In the late second century in Phrygia, a recent convert to Christianity named Montanus started a new movement emphasizing ecstasies and continued revelation from the Holy Spirit. The new prophecy movement spread throughout the church Many bishops condemned the movement, but there was not a formal church-wide condemnation. One of the first early feuds within the church was Cortodecumenism. In Asia, the followers of St. John the Evangelist celebrated Easter on the 14th of the Jewish month of Nisan, regardless of the day of the week, while the rest of the church celebrated Easter on Sunday. After the church in Asia refused to change to celebrating Easter on Sunday, Pope Victor I threatened to excommunicate them. But Irenaeus, who was from Asia, intervened and asked Victor to show leniency. In time the Corto Decuman practice died out, and the entire church came to celebrate Easter on Sunday. Around the year 190, Theodotus of Byzantium introduced the heresy known as Adoptionism, the teaching that Jesus was born a mere man, and was later adopted by God as his son. Theodotus was excommunicated by Pope Victor I. In the late 2nd century, Clement of Alexandria began studying philosophy and Christianity in Greece and Cappadocia, before travelling to Alexandria where he wrote extensively and taught his student Origen. Clement's writings are considered controversial because they went beyond established Christian orthodoxy. For example, Clement believed that matter was eternal and not created by God. Early in the 3rd century, Sibelius introduced the heresy of modalism, teaching that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit were simply manifestations of God in different places and times. This is also known as Patripassianism, the teaching that the Father suffered on the cross. Sibelius was excommunicated for heresy by Pope Callistus I in the year 220. Hippolytus was a disciple of Irenaeus and wrote the Philosophumina, the refutation of all heresies against the writings of Valentinus, Martian and other heretics. He was considered one of the greatest theologians of Rome and expected to become Pope. However, Zephyrinus was elected Pope instead and Hippolytus refused to accept the result, becoming one of the first anti-popes. Hippolytus and Pope Pontian were later both exiled by Emperor Maximinus Thrax to the mines of Sardinia, where they reconciled and died together as martyrs. Tertullian lived in Carthage and was one of the first theologians to write extensively in Latin. He is also one of the first Christians to use the term Trinity. Tertullian was an apologist and wrote extensively against Gnosticism. In the latter part of his life, he is said to have joined the Montanists. Origen was a student of Clement of Alexandria and wrote extensively from Alexandria. He developed an allegorical interpretation of scripture and his speculative theology wandered beyond the limits of orthodoxy, teaching the pre-existence of souls and the subordination of God the Son to God the Father. Around the year 250, Saint-Denis preached the gospel in Paris, where he was martyred. Saint-Denis would later be honoured as the patron saint of France. Novation was a scholarly theologian in the Roman Church and expected to be elected Pope. To his surprise, Cornelius was elected Pope. Novation refused to accept the results and wrote to all the churches of the world claiming that he was the rightful Pope. 
His followers throughout the world became known as Novationists and were known for their extreme rigorism, refusing to allow Christians who apostatized during the Decian persecution to return to the church, and even taking the extreme position that any Christian who committed a mortal sin could not return to the church. Cyprian, Bishop of Carthage, found himself in the middle of controversies over how to admit apostates and heretics to the church. Cyprian took the position that heretics needed to be rebaptized upon joining the church, but was rebuked by Pope Stephen I. Cyprian grew quarrelsome at this, exchanging angry letters against Pope Stephen with Familian, Bishop of Caesarea in Cappadocia. Pope Stephen threatened Familian with excommunication for refusing to adopt the Roman doctrine prohibiting second baptism. However, Pope Dionysius I of Alexandria intervened and convinced Stephen to show leniency. In the late 250s, a new persecution broke out under Emperor Valerian. Pope Stephen and his successor, Pope Sixtus II, were martyred. Cyprian was martyred in Carubis modern Corba. His last words were, thanks be to God. Paul of Samosata was Bishop of Antioch from the years 260 to 268. Paul taught the adoptionist heresy and was condemned by a council in Antioch led by Familian of Caesarea and sanctioned by Pope Dionysius of Alexandria. The decision of the council was ratified by Pope Dionysius of Rome and again by Pope Felix I. In the middle of the 3rd century in Ctesiphon, capital of the Sassanid Empire in Persia, a Jewish Christian Gnostic named Mani began teaching a new religion that he synthesized from Gnostic Christianity, Buddhism, and Zoroastrianism. Although Mani died while imprisoned by the Zoroastrian rulers of the Sassanid Empire, his new religion spread incredibly fast, reaching Rome as early as the year 280. Even Augustine of Hippo was a Manichaean before he converted to Christianity. Manichaeism was intensely persecuted and died out in Europe by the 6th century although in parts of Central Asia it survived as late as the 14th century. Many neo-gnostic movements throughout history, such as the Cathars of Southern Europe in the 12th through 14th centuries, were based on Manichaeism. The 4th century began with the worldwide persecution of the church by Emperor Diocletian, the final and bloodiest of ten great Roman persecutions of the church. The persecution came to an end with the Edicts of Toleration in the years 311 and 313, under Emperors Galerius and then Constantine. Constantine converted to Christianity, but did not make Christianity the state-mandated religion. Early in the 4th century, a priest in Alexandria named Arius began to teach that Jesus, prior to the Incarnation, was a created being, less than God the Father. This produced great controversy throughout the Church. Although Arius was exiled by Popes Peter and Alexander of Alexandria, Bishop Eusebius of Nicomedia championed the teachings of Arius at the imperial court of Emperor Constantine. Emperor Constantine summoned the Council of Nicaea in 325 to settle the Arian controversy and other issues in the church. Bishop Hosius of Cordoba in Spain represented Pope Sylvester I as papal legate and presided over the council. According to Athanasius, Hosius wrote the Nicene Creed that was adopted by the council and established the doctrine that the Father and the Son were consubstantial, having the same undivided substance or essence. The Council of Nicaea also confirmed the hierarchy of church governance, in which Rome, Alexandria and Antioch were acknowledged as the highest sees in the church. Following the council, Bishop Eusebius of Nicomedia and Arius were banished by Emperor Constantine. However, Eusebius was a skilled politician and quickly rewon the Emperor's favour. Constantine brought Eusebius back from exile and made Eusebius his chief religious advisor. At the request of Eusebius, Constantine began deposing bishops who upheld the Orthodox Nicene faith, including Eustathius of Antioch in 330 and Athanasius of Alexandria in 335. Constantine's successor in the Eastern Empire, Constantius II, supported Arianism and made Eusebius bishop of the new imperial capital Constantinople in the year 339. Constantius was a committed Arian and opposed bishops who adhered to the Nicene Creed. These bishops fled to the protection of Pope Julius I in Rome, who restored them to their sees. In 350, Emperor Constantius became sole emperor and suppressed the church in Rome, banishing Pope Liberius for two years. Constantius's successor in the east, Valens, 
continued to support Arianism. Ulfilas, a Goth who studied Christianity in Cappadocia, was sent by Eusebius of Nicomedia to teach the Arian faith to the Gothic tribes of Europe. Ulfilas successfully converted the Goths to Arianism and became their bishop. Ulfilas also translated the Bible into Gothic and developed the Gothic alphabet. Ulfilas wrote an Arian creed, which declared that the Holy Spirit was not God, that the Holy Spirit was subject and obedient in all things to the Son, and that the Son was subject and obedient in all things to the Father. At the Third Council of Sirmium in 357, a council of the Church rejected the Nicene Creed, declared that the Father and the Son were not consubstantial, and in fact that the Father was greater than the Son. Pope Liberius of Rome was exiled for refusing to accept the Arian doctrine, although he was released two years later and continued to uphold the Orthodox Nicene faith. In the year 330, Eustathius, Patriarch of Antioch, a staunch supporter of the Nicene Creed, was deposed at the request of Eusebius of Nicomedia. In the following decades, the Emperor would continue to appoint Arian bishops over Antioch, while Orthodox Christians in the city became divided between the successors of Paulinus, an Orthodox Nicene Christian, and Miletius, whose initial position was not clear, but who taught Orthodox Nicene Christianity by the end of his life, supporting Gregory of Nazianzus and presiding over the First Council of Constantinople in the year 381. It took until early in the 5th century for the followers of Paulinus to accept the successors of Miletius. Arianism continued to flourish until Emperor Theodosius ascended the imperial throne in the year 379. Theodosius expelled the Arian bishop of Constantinople and appointed Gregory Nazianzen, leader of a small group of Orthodox Nicene Christians, bishop of Constantinople. The city's Arian populace rioted in protest. In 380, Theodosius issued the Edict of Thessalonica, which commanded the entire Roman Empire to submit to the Orthodox Christian faith that St. Peter had taught to the Romans, and that had been faithfully preserved by Pope Damasus of Rome and Pope Peter of Alexandria. Emperor Theodosius subsequently made Arianism illegal throughout the empire. At the Council of Constantinople, 150 bishops, all from the East, ratified the Orthodox Nicene faith and rebuked the heresies of Pneumatomachianism, the teaching that the Holy Spirit was less than the Father and the Son, and Apollinarianism, the teaching that the highest part of the soul of Jesus was replaced by the divine Logos. However, Apollinarian writers had written many forgeries under the names of Orthodox Fathers, such as Athanasius, which included statements to the effect that Jesus had one nature, one energy, and one will. Miletius of Antioch died while presiding over the council. The Council of Constantinople, without the consent of the churches of Rome and Alexandria, elevated Constantinople to the second highest see in the church after Rome, based on its status as the new capital of the empire. The attempt by Constantinople to elevate itself over Alexandria and Antioch would produce infighting between Constantinople, Alexandria and Antioch in the coming decades that eventually led to all-out schism. The 5th century began with conflict between the sees of Constantinople, Alexandria and Antioch. St. John Chrysostom, a priest from Antioch, was named Bishop of Constantinople in 403. Theophilus, Pope of Alexandria, feared Antioch's influence over the imperial court at Constantinople and sought to depose Chrysostom. Although Theophilus was initially unsuccessful, Chrysostom eventually lost favour with the Empress and was deposed and exiled. He appealed for help from Pope Innocent I in Rome, who excommunicated the officials of Constantinople for their treatment of Chrysostom. Chrysostom died in exile. Meanwhile, the Western Empire was collapsing, and Rome was sacked by the Arian Visigoths in 410. The Visigoths then relocated to Spain. During this time, St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo, led the church in Africa. Augustine combated the Donatists, who, similar to the Novationists, challenged the right of apostates to administer sacraments, as well as Pelagians, who asserted that the sacraments were not necessary for people who were strong enough to live a holy life through their own effort. In addition, the bishops of Africa became increasingly frustrated by appeals from their subjects to the Pope in Rome, and forbade this practice at the Council of Carthage in 419. This quarrel culminated in the Opterimus in 426, 
a letter written by the African bishops to Pope Celestine I, in which they angrily objected to the Pope interfering in the judicial discipline of the churches in Africa. The quarrel was brought to an end by the conquest of North Africa by the Vandals in the years 429 to 439. The Vandals were Arian and oppressed the local Catholics. Saint Augustine died during the siege of Hippo by the Vandals in the year 430. The feud between Constantinople, Alexandria and Antioch resumed with the appointment of Nestorius, a priest from Antioch, to the bishopric of Constantinople in 428. Nestorius was from a theological school in Antioch that emphasized the humanity of Christ and sought to explain how the human Jesus became united to the divine Logos. Christians in this time were honoring Mary as the Theotokos, the mother of God, but Nestorius opposed this practice saying that Mary was merely the mother of Christ. Nestorius was accused of heresy by Pope Cyril of Alexandria. Cyril received approval from Pope Celestine in Rome to depose Nestorius at the Council of Ephesus in 431. Patriarch John I of Antioch, no doubt perturbed that Alexandria was deposing an Antiochene bishop of Constantinople for the second time in 30 years, at first refused to accept the council, setting up his own rival council. However, John eventually relented and agreed to the deposition of Nestorius. Saint Cyril of Alexandria's writings on the Nestorian controversy became widely celebrated throughout the Eastern Church, including in the region of Antioch. The followers of Nestorius at first congregated around the school of Edessa, but in 489 were forced by Byzantine Emperor Zeno to flee to the Sassanid Empire in Persia. The Sassanid Empire was happy to tolerate Christians in its borders as long as they were in schism with the religion of its primary enemy, the Byzantine Empire. And so the Church of the East became Nestorian and spread as far east as China in the following centuries. St. Patrick was raised in Roman-occupied England, but at the age of 14 was kidnapped by Irish raiders and forced into slavery as a shepherd. St. Patrick escaped Ireland and entered a monastery in Gaul, eventually returning to Ireland and converting the Irish to Christianity. In his writings, St. Cyril of Alexandria had quoted an Apollinarian forgery that asserted that Jesus had one nature, mere thesis. His successor, Pope Dioscorus of Alexandria, believed this to be the historic teaching of the Church. Dioscorus saw a third opportunity for Alexandria to depose the Bishop of Constantinople when Bishop Flavian condemned the monk Eutyches for teaching that Jesus had one nature. Eutyches and Flavian both appealed to Pope Leo I of Rome. Meanwhile, Dioscorus won the ear of Emperor Theodosius II, who allowed Dioscorus and Bishop Juvenal of Jerusalem to convene the Robber Council of Ephesus in 449, which deposed both Flavian and Pope Leo. Emperor Theodosius died within a year, and the new emperor, Marcion, was loyal to Pope Leo. Leo called for a new council and wrote the famous Leo's Tome, which set forth the orthodox doctrine of Christology that the church has upheld to the present day. The hypostatic union, Jesus is one person with two natures, fully God and fully man. Two perfect natures without confusion, without mixture, without separation, without change, in one person. The Council of Chalcedon accepted Leo's tome in 451 and deposed Dioscorus. The tension between Constantinople, Alexandria and Antioch erupted into outright schism following the Council of Chalcedon. In addition to the mere Physite controversy, the Council of Chalcedon had attempted to make several important changes in church governance. First, in exchange for Bishop Juvenal of Jerusalem returning to the Catholic faith, Jerusalem was elevated to a patriarchate, with Palestine removed from the patriarchate of Antioch. Next, the Council of Chalcedon made Constantinople the final court of appeal for bishops in the east and elevated Constantinople to a patriarchate over the regions of Thrace, Asia and Pontus. Most importantly, the Council of Chalcedon attempted to make Constantinople the second highest see in the church, above Alexandria and Antioch, just as the Council of Constantinople had tried to do 70 years earlier. Pope Leo was outraged that Constantinople had upset the hierarchy of the established Petrine sees of Rome, Alexandria and Antioch that had been fixed by the Council of Nicaea. He refused to accept the proposed changes and rebuked Bishop Anatolius of Constantinople for using the Myophysite controversy as an excuse to usurp power. The people of Alexandria were even more outraged. The Council of Chalcedon had banished their Pope Dioscorus 
and installed Proterius as bishop. An angry mob in Alexandria killed Proterius and installed Timothy, a zealous Myophysite, as Pope of Alexandria. In Syria and Palestine, Chalcedon was rejected by the local people. The first great schism in the church had begun. The people of Egypt and Syria, Copts and Syriacs, formed the Oriental Orthodox Communion and would continue to the present day to elect their own Myophysite patriarchs in opposition to the Imperial Melkite patriarchs appointed by the Emperor from Constantinople. At the time of Chalcedon, Attila the Hun conquered Central Europe and was poised to sack Rome. But Pope Leo rode out to meet them and persuaded Attila to spare the city. Meanwhile, the Vandals aggressively conquered the western half of the Mediterranean, capturing Sicily, Sardinia and Corsica. In 455, the Vandals sacked Rome, the second sacking in 45 years, although Pope Leo persuaded them to spare the city's inhabitants. In the last great joint military campaign of the Western and Eastern Roman Empire, a massive armada of Byzantine and Roman ships was destroyed by the Vandals at the Battle of Cartagena in 468. The Byzantine Empire was left bankrupt, and the Western Empire was deprived of its source of grain from Africa. In 471, Peter the Fuller, Myophysite Patriarch of Antioch, introduced the Nicene Creed as modified by the Council of Constantinople in 381 into the liturgy at Antioch in protest of the Council of Chalcedon. Although the creed was originally used in this way to protest the Council of Chalcedon, its use in liturgy spread throughout the church and by the 11th century was used by the Church of Rome. In 482, Byzantine Emperor Zeno attempted to placate the Myophysite factions in Alexandria and Antioch by issuing a statement of faith called the Henoticon, which approved the writings of Cyril of Alexandria, but did not mention the Council of Chalcedon or Leo's tome. Pope Felix III of Rome condemned the Henoticon, but bishops Acacius of Constantinople, Peter the Fuller of Antioch, and Peter Mongus of Alexandria accepted it. Pope Felix therefore excommunicated all three of them, beginning the Acacian schism that would last until 519. Felix is often quoted as saying, not to oppose error is to approve it, and not to defend truth is to suppress it, and indeed to neglect to confound evil men when we can do it is no less a sin than to encourage them. In 476, the last Western Roman Emperor, Romulus Augustus, was overthrown by his general, Odoesa, who established the Kingdom of Italy. In 493, Theodoric the Great, an Arian and King of the Ostrogoths, defeated and killed Odoesa, and established Ostrogothic rule over Italy. Odoacer's final words were, Where is God? 500 years after the birth of Jesus, Orthodox Christianity was on the verge of extinction. Arian kingdoms had conquered all of Europe, Italy, Gaul, Spain and North Africa. The Byzantine Empire had rejected Leo's tome and embraced Myophysitism. Rome alone stood for the Orthodox Catholic faith, surrounded on all sides by Arians and Myophysites. Rome had been sacked twice in the past century and was now under the rule of an Arian kingdom. In the coming century, Rome would be brought to the brink of annihilation as the armies of Constantinople and the Ostrogoths descended upon it. But a new light began to shine in 508 when King Clovis I of the Franks was baptized as a Catholic. The darkness receded further in 519 when Byzantine Emperor Justin I, unable to maintain ecclesiastical union with Syria and Egypt, sought reunion with Rome and compelled his bishops to submit to the formula of Pope Hormisdas, which affirmed Leo's tome and declared that all who did not agree with the Bishop of Rome were not in communion with the Catholic Church. However, the Myophysites in Syria and Egypt refused to accept the formula Leo's tome or the Council of Chalcedon. The Catholic Church finally brought an end to the Pelagian controversy at the Council of Orange in 529, which condemned semi-Pelagianism, the doctrine that humans of their own effort without the help of the grace of God can come to faith in the desire for baptism. In the East, new Byzantine Emperor Justinian I began a campaign to recapture the Western Empire, beginning with the successful conquest of North Africa from the Vandals in 533. Justinian then sought to conquer Italy from the Ostrogoths. 
he captured Rome in 536, but the Ostrogoths counterattacked and besieged the city in 538, and finally sacked the city in 546. The Byzantines retook the city, but the Ostrogoths sacked it a second time in 549. The Byzantines finally captured Rome for good in 552. The constant fighting left Rome almost completely destroyed. From a population of over a million people at the time of the Apostles Peter and Paul, the population of Rome fell to a mere 50,000. Justinian's ambitions were disrupted in 541 when plague broke out in Constantinople, rapidly spreading across the Byzantine Empire. 10,000 people a day died in Constantinople. Justinian himself was infected but survived. The Byzantine Empire was greatly weakened. Monasteries in Italy during this time were frequently relaxed places where members of wealthy aristocratic families lived a life of leisure. St. Benedict attempted to change this by introducing the Rule of St. Benedict, which established a strict regimen of work, prayer and study. Benedict's rule was so strict that one monastery attempted to poison him twice. Over the next five centuries, the rule of St. Benedict would become the predominant rule of monastic life in Western Europe. While the Ostrogoths were besieging Rome in 545, Emperor Justinian brought Pope Vigilius I to Constantinople, where he stayed at the Placidia Palace and was safe from the constant fighting that was destroying Rome. At Constantinople, Emperor Justinian put pressure on Pope Vigilius to condemn the three chapters, certain Nestorian writings from the previous century. Justinian believed their condemnation would help bring reunion with the Miaphysites in Syria and Egypt. The writers of the three chapters had died in the previous century, and two of the writers had been reconciled to the church at the Council of Chalcedon. Pope Vigilius was reluctant to posthumously condemn these writers, but eventually consented to the condemnation issued by the Fifth Ecumenical Council in 553. In 555, three years after Rome had been safely restored to the Byzantine Empire, Pope Vigilius left Constantinople for Rome, but died on the journey. The Byzantine Empire was severely weakened by the plague and decades of fighting the Ostrogoths, which allowed the Germanic Lombards to invade Italy in 568. The Lombards conquered most of the peninsula except for the Exarchate of Ravenna, a narrow corridor from Ravenna, the capital, to Rome. The Byzantine Emperor continued to rule the Exarchate of Ravenna and required his consent to all elections of the Pope, resulting in the era of the Byzantine Papacy. In 587, King Ricard I of the Visigoths converted from Arianism to Catholicism. Pope Gregory the Great reigned from 590 to 604. He reformed the church and sent missioners throughout Europe. In 588, John the Faster, Bishop of Constantinople, claimed the title of Ecumenical Bishop or Universal Bishop, but Pope Gregory refused to permit the title, affirming papal supremacy and the rank of the three Petrine sees of Rome, Alexandria and Antioch above Constantinople. In the east, the Byzantine Empire faced a new threat as a migrating tribe from Asia, the Avars, invaded the Balkans. Pagan Saxons had conquered England after the fall of the Roman Empire. Pope Gregory the Great sent Augustine of Canterbury to evangelise the Saxons in England, and Augustine became the first Archbishop of Canterbury in the year 597. In 602, war erupted between the Byzantine Empire and the Sassanid Empire. The Sassanid Empire gained early victories, conquering Antioch in 613, Jerusalem in 614, Anatolia in 617, and Alexandria in 618. However, the Byzantine Empire rallied under Emperor Heraclius and defeated the Sassanid Empire at the Battle of Nineveh in 628, regaining all of its lost territory. In the year 633, Melkite Patriarch Cyrus of Alexandria reached an agreement with the Coptic Church that there is one energy or faculty of action in Jesus, the doctrine of monothelitism. The monk Sophronius, who had become Patriarch of Jerusalem, staunchly opposed monothelitism and protested to Patriarch Sergius of Constantinople that there were two energies in Jesus, diothelitism. Sergius proposed to Pope Honorius I in Rome that the Church should prohibit the discussion of one or two energies altogether. Sergius mentioned as a side note 
that the doctrine of two energies might lead people to believe there are two contrary wills in Christ. Pope Honorius wrote back agreeing with the proposal to prohibit the discussion of one or two energies. Honorius also mentioned as a side note that Jesus has one will, because when Jesus assumed human nature, Jesus assumed the nature we had before Adam's fall, not our vitiated nature tainted by original sin. Honorius, personal secretary, successor Pope John IV, and Maximus the Confessor, defended these statements, saying that Honorius had only denied the existence of a sinful will in Christ's human nature, not the existence of a human will altogether. Meanwhile in Mesopotamia, the Arab Muslim Rashidun Caliphate had risen up against the Byzantine and Sassanid empires. To the shock of both empires, the Arabs defeated the combined forces of the Sassanid and Byzantine empires in the Battle of Firaz in December 633. Ctesiphon, the capital of the Sassanid Empire, fell in March 637. In the same year, the Rashidun Caliphate captured both Antioch and Jerusalem. With the borders of his empire collapsing, Emperor Heraclius was annoyed to find his bishops quarrelling over monothelitism. Honorius, Sergius and Sophronius all died in 638, and Heraclius issued the Ecthesis, which prohibited discussion of one or two energies in Christ and affirmed that Jesus has only one will. The Melkite patriarchs of Constantinople, Antioch, who following the fall of Antioch to the Sassanid Empire, resided in Constantinople, and Alexandria, all affirmed the Ecthesis. But Pope Severinus I condemned the Ecthesis and affirmed that there are two energies and two wills in Jesus Christ, human and divine. Alexandria fell to the Rashidun Caliphate in 641. Rome and Constantinople were the only seas that remained in the Byzantine Empire. They remained in schism for the next 40 years. Meanwhile, Myophysites in Syria and Egypt welcomed the Rashidun Caliphate as liberators and joined in the fight against the Byzantine Empire. Eager to bring an end to the quarrel among his bishops, Emperor Constans II in 648 issued the Typus, which ordered the church to cease all discussion of one or two wills or energies in Jesus. Pope Martin I refused to comply and was seized by Byzantine troops and died in prison after refusing to renounce diatheletism. Maximus the Confessor left Constantinople for Rome, but he too was arrested and died in prison for refusing to renounce diatheletism. Meanwhile, the Rashidun Caliphate was divided in a civil war and replaced by the Umayyad Caliphate in 661, which reached the outskirts of Carthage in 665. The Umayyad Caliphate conquered Anatolia and besieged Constantinople from 674 to 678. The Byzantine Empire used Greek fire against the Umayyad navy for the first time in recorded history. To add to the Byzantine Empire's troubles, a new tribe from Central Asia, the Bulgarians, had invaded Thrace in 670, pressing as far as Thessalonica. In Italy, King Aripert I of the Lombards converted from Arianism to Catholicism in 653. The Lombard kings remained firmly Catholic from the time of King Percturate, bringing an end to the Arian rulers of the Germanic tribes in Europe. Finally, in 680 to 681, Emperor Constantine IV submitted to Pope Agato I and convened the Sixth Ecumenical Council, which condemned monothelitism and affirmed diatheletism. By this point, the Myophysites in Egypt, Syria and Palestine were no longer part of the Byzantine Empire, and the Emperor had little reason to continue compromising with them. The Sixth Ecumenical Council condemned Pope Honorius as a heretic for following Patriarch Sergius, but Pope Leo II changed the condemnation condemning Honorius for negligence rather than heresy. In 692, the Byzantine Empire held a Council of Eastern Bishops in Constantinople, the Quinisex Council, also known as the Council in Trullo, which condemned certain practices in the Western Church, including the depiction of Jesus as a lamb. When Pope Sergius I refused to accept the Council, Emperor Justinian II sent soldiers to arrest the Pope, but Justinian's soldiers were repulsed by local militia in Ravenna, who were loyal to the Pope. In response to the Quinisex Council's prohibition of depictions of Jesus as a lamb, 
Pope Sergius introduced Agnus Dei into the liturgy of the Roman Mass. The Roman Church never accepted the Quinisex Council. The following year, the Umayyad Caliphate captured Carthage. They would complete the conquest of North Africa in the following decade. Monothelites continued to hold influence in Constantinople. In 711, Emperor Philippicos Bardanes ascended the throne and installed a monothelite, John VI, as Bishop of Constantinople, who convened a synod that revoked the Sixth Ecumenical Council. Pope Constantine excommunicated them. At the same time, Bulgarians plundered Thrace up to the walls of Constantinople, and the Byzantine army rebelled against Philippicos, blinding him and installing his secretary as Emperor Anastasios. Anastasios reinstated the Sixth Ecumenical Council and deposed the monothelite Patriarch John VI, replacing him with the Orthodox Patriarch Germanus in 715. The Umayyad Caliphate invaded Spain in 711 and destroyed the Visigoths. The Umayyad Caliphate then invaded Gaul, where they met Charles Martel, Prince of the Franks, at the Battle of Tours in 732. Charles Martel defeated the Umayyad Caliphate, who retreated to Iberia, leaving Gaul under the control of the Franks. The Umayyad Caliphate laid siege to Constantinople from 717 to 719. Emperor Leo the Osorian enlisted the help of the Bulgarians who forced the Umayyad Caliphate to retreat. Leo feared that the empire had lost favour with God due to the veneration of icons. In 730, he issued an edict prohibiting the veneration of icons and installed an iconoclast Anastasios as Patriarch of Constantinople. Pope Gregory II condemned Leo's iconoclasm, and St. John of Damascus, living in Umayyad held Damascus, wrote a firm defence of the veneration of icons. Leo's successor Constantine V zealously enforced iconoclasm, declaring, He cannot be depicted, for what is depicted is one person, and he who circumscribes that person has plainly circumscribed the divine nature, which is incapable of being circumscribed. In February 754, Constantine convened a synod of Eastern bishops who voted in favour of iconoclasm. By the end of Constantine's reign, iconoclasm had gone as far as to brand relics and prayers to the saints as heretical. Meanwhile, with the Byzantine Empire distracted by wars against the Bulgarians and Muslims, Lombard king Eistolf captured Ravenna in 751, ending over two centuries of Byzantine rule. Following the Lombard conquest of Ravenna, Pope Zachary appealed for help from Pepin the Younger, whom he crowned King of the Franks. The Franks invaded Italy and conquered the Lombards, and granted most of the former Exarchate of Ravenna to the Pope as his temporal domain, which would become known as the Papal States. This marked a significant new era in the papacy, which for the previous 200 years had been under the relatively stable protection of the Byzantine Empire. For the next 800 years, the papacy would find itself at the centre of seemingly unending conflicts between Italian principalities and Europe's great powers. The popes of Rome continued to oppose Byzantine iconoclasm. Emperor Constantine VI finally relented and allowed the Seventh Ecumenical Council to meet in 787. The council had to meet in Nicaea, site of the First Ecumenical Council in 325, because the city of Constantinople was under iconoclast rule. The Seventh Ecumenical Council agreed to the demands of Pope Adrian I and affirmed the orthodoxy of the veneration of icons of Jesus, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the angels and the saints. On Christmas Day in 800, Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne, Holy Roman Emperor, at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. While the Byzantine Empire saw it as a betrayal since it had been the guardian of the faith for the past 400 years, the Pope hoped it would usher in a new era of stability and independence and free the papacy from outside political meddling. Instead, Charlemagne's empire would quickly splinter after his death, and the papacy would find itself at the mercy of whichever Italian principality happened to have the most power at any particular moment. In 823, King Harald Klack of Denmark was baptised, and Catholic missionaries continued to spread the gospel in Norway and Sweden. In 815, Byzantine Emperor Leo V reinstituted iconoclasm. Pope Pascal I offered persecuted Byzantine monks refuge in Rome. Saint Theodore the Studite in Constantinople wrote zealously against iconoclasm. Finally, in 843,
Byzantine Emperor Michael III deposed the iconoclast Patriarch John VII of Constantinople, replacing him with Patriarch Methodius I, which brought an end to Constantinople's second era of iconoclasm. In 827, the Abbasid Caliphate launched an invasion of Sicily and southern Italy, which had been under Byzantine rule. In 846, the Aglabits, vassals of the Abbasid Caliphate and known to Italy as Saracens, landed in central Italy and defeated the local Roman militia. The Saracens plundered all of Rome outside the Aurelian Wall, including St. Peter's Basilica, where Pope Leo III had crowned Charlemagne Holy Roman Emperor just 46 years earlier. In response, Pope Leo IV called together a fleet from neighbouring Italian principalities that defeated the Saracen navy at the Battle of Ostia in 849. Missionaries Cyril and Methodius converted the Slavic tribes of Central Europe in Great Moravia and Pannonia from 862 to 885, and brought these tribes into communion with Rome. In 858, Patriarch Ignatius of Constantinople was deposed, and a layman, Photius, was appointed Patriarch by Emperor Michael III. Ignatius and Photius both appealed to Pope Nicholas I, who recognised Ignatius as rightful patriarch. Rome and Constantinople fell into schism until 867, when Nicholas died and Photius was deposed by new Emperor Basil I. In 864, Khan Boris I of Bulgaria was baptised into the Catholic faith and sought competing offers from Rome and Constantinople as to which patriarchate he should belong to. In 869, the Fourth Council of Constantinople affirmed the deposition of Photius and prohibited criticism of the Pope. It also affirmed the veneration of images of Jesus, his mother Mary, the angels and the saints, and recognised Constantinople as the second highest see in the church. Photius became Patriarch of Constantinople for a second time in 877, and held a council in 879, revoking the Council of 869. The Council of 879 was not accepted by Rome. In the 9th century, the pagan Magyars migrated from Central Asia to Eastern Europe and conquered present-day Hungary, from where they launched raids against the scattered principalities of the former Carolingian Empire. At the same time, Vikings from Scandinavia harassed the coast of Northern Europe and England. The Carolingian Empire had been established with the crowning of Charlemagne in 800, but his successors were unable to keep the empire united the Carolingian Empire split apart for good in 888. In the absence of a strong central power in Western Europe, the papacy found itself at the mercy of local Italian principalities, while the Abbasid Caliphate conquered Sicily and central Italy, coming within striking distance of Rome. Leo VI became Byzantine Emperor in 886. He banished Photius and liberated southern Italy from the Abbasid Caliphate, but lost Sicily and failed in an attempt to retake Crete. In 907 and 911, Kievan Rus laid siege to Constantinople, forcing the negotiation of a favourable trade treaty. Although Photius had attempted to convert Kievan Rus to Christianity, the king and a majority of the people remained pagan until the end of the 10th century. Norse Vikings had been raiding northern Europe since 820. In 911, Charles III, king of West Francia, negotiated an agreement with Viking leader Rollo that granted the Vikings territory in northern France, which became known as the Duchy of Normandy. The Normans would come to play a major part in church history in the coming centuries. The disintegration of the Carolingian Empire allowed Count Theophylact of Tusculum in Italy to attain de facto rule over Rome. Theophylact and his family used their power to control elections to the papacy in the early 10th century, an era called the Seculum Obscurum, the Dark Age of the Papacy. While Rome was dominated by the Count of Tusculum, monasticism and church discipline declined across Europe as the Carolingian Empire disintegrated into countless separate fiefdoms. In 910, Saint Berno became abbot of the new Abbey of Cluny and immediately enforced a strict interpretation of the rule of Saint Benedict. In the following century, a new line of popes would emerge from Cluny Abbey to reform the church and defy the Holy Roman Emperor. The Abbasid Caliphate captured central Italy in the late 9th century, threatening Rome itself. In 915, Italian forces under the command of Pope John X and Byzantine forces from southern Italy 
attacked the main Abbasid fortress on the Garigliano River in central Italy. The Abbasids were defeated and driven from mainland Italy back to Sicily. Otto, Duke of Saxony, united the German territories of the former Carolingian Empire and restored the Holy Roman Empire. Otto brought an end to the Magyar raids against Europe with his victory at the Battle of Lechfeld in 955, earning him the reputation as the saviour of Christendom. In 961, Otto conquered Italy and was crowned Holy Roman Emperor at St. Peter's Basilica in 962. Otto also negotiated a peace that permitted the Byzantine Empire to retain southern Italy. More kingdoms of northern and eastern Europe converted to Christianity in the 10th century. In 966, Mieszko, Duke of Poland, was baptized. In 988, Vladimir the Great, Grand Prince of Kiev, was baptized. In 995, Olaf Tryggvason became the first Christian king of Norway. Sweden and Magyar Hungary remained two of the few pagan countries left in Europe. Nubia, modern Sudan and Ethiopia, had been loyal to the Patriarch of Alexandria from the beginning of the church. Nubia followed the Coptic church and adopted Maya visitism. The Nubian kingdoms of Nobatia, Mercuria and Elodia reached the peak of their power in the 10th century before eventually being overrun by the Abbasid Caliphate. By the beginning of the 11th century, the Byzantine Empire had recovered much of its former territory and reasserted itself as the dominant power in the Eastern Mediterranean. Antioch, Syria and Palestine, north of Jerusalem, were recaptured by the empire before the turn of the millennium. Under Emperor Basil II, the Byzantine Empire conquered Bulgaria, the Crimea and the southern Caucasus. In the year 1001, Stephen I became the first Catholic king of Hungary, and in 1008, Olaf Skutkuning, king of Sweden, was baptized as a Catholic. 1,000 years after the birth of Jesus Christ, all of Europe was united in the Catholic faith. The kingdoms of Nubia had spread Christianity into sub-Saharan Africa, and the Church of the East had brought Christianity as far east as China. The Byzantine Empire had been restored to its former glory, and Rome and Constantinople had gone over 100 years without a schism. But tensions in southern Italy and a new threat from Central Asia would soon lead to an enduring schism in the heart of Christendom. In the early 11th century, Lombards in southern Italy rebelled against the Byzantine Empire and recruited mercenaries from the Duchy of Normandy in northern France. The Normans were granted land in return for their service and quickly became the dominant power in southern Italy. The Norman use of Latin Rite worship with unleavened bread created conflict with local Byzantine citizens who used leavened bread which they viewed as symbolic of the resurrection. Pope Leo IX came to view the Normans as a threat and raised an army to assist the Byzantine war against the Normans, but he was defeated by the Normans at the Battle of Civitate in 1053. In 1051, Benedictine monk Peter Damian urged the Pope to correct widespread problems in the clergy, particularly the lack of celibacy, the purchase of clerical offices, a practice that was named simony after Simon Magus, who sought to buy the gift of laying on hands from the Apostle Peter, and the appointment of bishops by secular rulers, which was known as lay investiture. The attempt by the popes in the coming decades to correct these vices would lead to confrontation with the Holy Roman Emperor. Peter Damian also began the fundamental debate of the second millennium concerning the relationship between reason and faith arguing that philosophy should be used in a manner consistent with the Christian faith. Patriarch Michael Cerularius in Constantinople was angered by the Norman disturbance in southern Italy and wrote a letter criticizing their liturgical practices. He also closed Latin Rite churches in Constantinople in reprisal for Norman closings of Byzantine churches in southern Italy. Pope Leo IX sent Cardinal Humbert of Silva Candida to negotiate with Cerularius but Cerularius refused to meet with him. After months of waiting, Cardinal Humbert delivered a notice of excommunication against Cerularius on July 16, 1054, but Pope Leo had died three months earlier, so the excommunication had no effect. Nevertheless, Cerularius removed Leo's name from the diptychs in Constantinople. In 1066, William the Conqueror defeated Harold II of England at the Battle of Hastings. William became King of England. 
In southern Italy, Pope Nicholas II made peace with the Normans, investing Norman leader Robert Guiscard as Duke of Southern Italy and Sicily. The Normans finished their conquest of Byzantine southern Italy and Sicily in 1072 and turned their sights on the Balkans, where Norman leader Robert Guiscard defeated the Byzantine Empire in a series of battles and established a short-lived Norman foothold. However, the Normans were urgently recalled to Italy by Pope Gregory, who was under siege by Emperor Henry IV of the Holy Roman Empire. By 1073, the Holy Roman Empire had fallen from its heights under Otto I and was facing fragmentation and decentralization as various principalities challenged the authority of Emperor Henry IV. Meanwhile, Pope Gregory VII was attempting to reform the church by restoring priestly celibacy, ending simony, and ending lay investiture, the appointment of bishops by the secular king. This last reform brought Pope Gregory into conflict with Emperor Henry, and after the emperor attempted to depose Gregory, Gregory deposed and excommunicated the emperor. After several attempts at reconciliation, Emperor Henry IV invaded Rome and appointed Guibert of Ravenna as anti-pope Clement III. Robert Guiscard defeated Emperor Henry IV at Rome, but following the victory, Robert Guiscard's Norman soldiers plundered the city. After three days, the people of Rome rose up against the Normans, but the Normans suppressed them and set fire to much of the city. Pope Gregory VII was exiled and died shortly thereafter. Robert Guiscard's army left Rome to focus on their war with the Byzantine Empire, leaving anti-Pope Clement III, who was loyal to the Holy Roman Empire, in control of the city. The next two popes, Victor III and Urban II, were forced to reign from outside the city until 1096, when a French army called to the Crusades by Pope Urban II liberated Rome and allowed Pope Urban to safely return. The foremost theologian of the 11th century was Bishop Anselm of Canterbury, who introduced the ontological proof for the existence of God, argued in favour of the procession of the Holy Spirit from the Father and the Son, and taught the satisfaction theory of the Atonement, that Jesus Christ offered himself on the cross, not merely as a ransom to the devil, but in satisfaction of the debt of honour that mankind owed to God. Anselm became embroiled in what would become the fundamental philosophical debate of the second millennium, concerning the relationship between universals and particulars. The Latin world had generally accepted the realist philosophy of Plato and Aristotle, that universals have a real existence. Late in the 11th century, a French philosopher named Roscelin challenged realism and introduced the philosophy known as nominalism, teaching that only particulars exist and that universals are merely words given to common attributes of particulars. Roscelin also argued that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit were not one god, but three gods. Anselm, a realist, strongly condemned Roslin's teachings, but the cause of nominalism would be taken up in the 12th century by the philosopher Peter Abelard. The Seljuk Turks, led by Arp Aslan, had migrated from Central Asia north of the Caspian and Aral Seas into Persia and invaded the Byzantine Empire in 1068. In 1071, the Turks decisively defeated the Byzantine Empire at the Battle of Manzikert, effectively bringing all of Anatolia under Turkish control. The Turkish Empire became the dominant power in the Middle East, stretching from Anatolia to the borders of China. Zahir al daula Artuk Bey founded the Artuqid dynasty, which ruled the east coast of the Mediterranean Sea, including Antioch and Jerusalem. Reports soon reached Europe of mistreatment of Christian pilgrims in the Holy Land. In 1095, Byzantine Emperor Alexios I appealed to Pope Urban II for help against the Seljuk Turks. Pope Urban II proclaimed the First Crusade and granted a plenary indulgence to all who joined. A peasant army led by Peter the Hermit arrived in Constantinople in 1096, but they were easily defeated by the Turks upon crossing into Anatolia. The Prince's Crusade succeeded in defeating the Turks in Anatolia. In 1098, they captured Antioch. Meanwhile, Fatimid Arabs had succeeded in liberating Jerusalem from the Artiquid Seljuks. The Fatimids were allied with the Byzantine Empire. Nevertheless, the Crusaders set aside the initial objective of repulsing the Seljuk Turks and sought to reclaim the Holy Land for Christendom. In 1099, the Crusaders captured Jerusalem from the Fatimids after a long siege. 
the Crusaders slaughtered every inhabitant of the city. In contrast, when the Arab Muslims had captured Jerusalem in 637, they did not kill a single inhabitant. Instead, the Muslim Caliph Umar son of Al-Khattab calmly entered the city unescorted and toured it with Patriarch Sophronius. The Crusaders defeated a counterattack by the Fatimids at the Battle of Ascalon, and the Fatimids retreated into Egypt, leaving the Crusaders in control of the Crusader states at Antioch, Tripoli, and Jerusalem for the time being. At the start of the 12th century, Pope Pascal II appointed Eric Knupsen, Bishop of Greenland and Vinland, modern-day Newfoundland, making him the first Bishop of America. The investiture controversy that began under Pope Gregory VII and Emperor Henry IV finally came to a resolution between Emperor Henry V and Pope Callistus II with the Concordat of Worms in 1122. Previous Holy Roman Emperors had thought it their right to appoint bishops and to confirm the papal election. The Concordat of Worms significantly reduced the Emperor's power. The King was recognised as having the right to invest bishops with secular authority, but not with religious authority. The Melkite Patriarch of Antioch, Anastasius II, died in 609, and Constantinople began to appoint a series of titular patriarchs, who resided not in Antioch, but in Constantinople. In 685, the Maronites elected Bishop John Maron of Betrun as Patriarch of Antioch and all the East. The Maronites welcomed the Crusaders and sought reunion with Rome. In 1131, reunion was granted, and Maronite Patriarch Gregorius al-Halati was recognised by Pope Innocent II as the rightful Patriarch of Antioch. Early in the 12th century, a professor at the University of Paris named Peter Abelard planted the seeds of rationalism that would come to dominate philosophical thought in the second millennium. Abelard championed the use of Aristotelian logic, regardless of whether it led to orthodox theological conclusions. Abelard was accused of denying the separate existence of the three persons of the Trinity, and of teaching that Jesus did not atone for humanity's sins, but merely set a good example for his disciples to follow. Abelard's innovative ideas brought him into conflict with the Catholic hierarchy and St. Bernard of Clairvaux. By the beginning of the 12th century, discipline in monasteries had once again declined. The Cistercian movement sought to restore monasteries to the austerity of the rule of St. Benedict, with an emphasis on manual labour. St. Bernard of Clairvaux joined a Cistercian monastery in the 12th century, and quickly became recognised across Europe as the most influential mystic in the church. Bernard rebutted the teachings of Peter Abelard and was instrumental in preaching the Second Crusade. In 1144, the Seljuk Empire recaptured Edessa from the Crusader states. In response, Pope Eugene III called for the Second Crusade, which was fervently preached by St. Bernard. However, the Crusaders suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of the Seljuks. St. Bernard felt humiliated and wrote a letter of apology to the Pope. Elsewhere, the Holy Roman Empire launched the Wendish Crusades to convert the Palabian Slavs in northeast Europe and Aragon and Castile retook Spain from the Muslim Taifa kingdoms. The papacy suffered a series of defeats against Norman-occupied southern Italy following the Norman sack of Rome in 1084. Pope Innocent II was ambushed and taken prisoner by Norman troops in 1139. In 1144, papal forces were again defeated by the Normans. The newly formed Roman Senate used the opportunity to revolt against the Pope declaring the Commune of Rome in 1144. The following year, Pope Lucius II died, leading an assault against the Commune. Arnold of Brescia was a student of Peter Abelard. While Abelard abandoned his teachings under the threat of excommunication, Arnold brazenly championed Abelard's teachings in defiance of the Church. In 1145, Arnold returned from exile to join the Commune of Rome, and the following year he succeeded in driving Pope Eugene III from the city. Arnold rejected the temporal power of the Pope, denounced clerical wealth and championed apostolic poverty, ideas that would find a growing audience among dissenters such as Peter Waldo, the spiritualist sect of the Franciscans and John Wycliffe in the coming centuries. Pope Adrian IV summoned an army from the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa to retake the city of Rome, and Arnold was burned at the stake. Islamic philosophy flourished as early as the 8th century, based on the writings of Plato and Aristotle, and led to significant developments in science and mathematics. 
In the 11th century, Persian scholar Al-Ghazali led a reaction against Greek philosophy in his treatise, The Incoherence of the Philosophers. Al-Ghazali was strongly rebutted in the 12th century by the Spanish philosopher Averroes, whose arguments in favour of the use of Aristotelian logic had a powerful influence on medieval scholastic theologians at the universities of Paris and Naples. In the middle of the 12th century, Peter Lombard, a scholar at the University of Paris, wrote one of the first comprehensive textbooks on Christian theology, the Book of Sentences, which would form the basis of scholastic studies for the next several centuries. Saladin, a Sunni Muslim from the Abbasid Caliphate, travelled to Cairo as an advisor to the Shia Fatimid Caliphate. Saladin quickly rose through the ranks and eventually overthrew the Fatimid Caliphate, becoming Sultan of the new Ayyubid Sultanate and launching a successful military campaign that recaptured Jerusalem, Damascus and other territory from the Crusader states, following which he negotiated a peace with King Richard the Lionheart of England. During this time, Constantinople had made trade agreements with Venice, Genoa and Pisa. Italian merchants soon became a sizable portion of the city's population, causing resentment among the local Greeks. Tensions in Constantinople finally boiled over in 1182, when the Greeks massacred nearly the entire 60,000 Italian population of Constantinople. In 1194, Holy Roman Emperor Henry VI took control of the Norman Kingdom Southern Italy and Sicily through his marriage to Constance, daughter of the Norman King Roger II. Henry's son Frederick would go on to lead a series of wars against the city-states of Italy that would eventually lead the Pope to turn to a new ally, France. Venice got its revenge against Constantinople in 1204, when the Fourth Crusade, which had been commissioned to come to the aid of the Crusader states, instead sacked Constantinople and replaced the Byzantine Empire with the Latin Empire. The Byzantine Empire split into three different kingdoms on the opposite shores around Nicaea. In 1209, Francis of Assisi formed the Order of Friars Minor with the approval of Pope Innocent III. The friars devoted themselves to lives of poverty and preaching. In southern France, the old heresy of Manichaeism had been revived by the Cathars. In 1209, Pope Innocent III proclaimed a crusade against the Cathars, which was completed by the Kingdom of France in 1226. Saint Dominic, founder of the Order of Preachers, followed the Crusader armies, preaching conversion to the Cathar people. As early as the 8th century, the doctrine of the Holy Eucharist had been the subject of academic discussion in Western Europe. In the 11th century, Berenger of Tours was condemned for denying that the body and blood of Jesus Christ were truly present in the sacrament of the Eucharist. In 1215, the Fourth Lateran Council affirmed the doctrine of transubstantiation, declaring, His body and blood are truly contained in the sacrament of the altar under the forms of bread and wine, the bread and wine having been transubstantiated by God's power into his body and blood, so that in order to achieve this mystery of unity, we receive from God what he received from us. Throughout the first half of the 13th century, Holy Roman Emperor Frederick II led multiple military campaigns against Italian city-states that resisted his rule. Supporters of the emperor became known as Ghibellines, while opponents of the emperor became known as Guelphs. The constant fighting and chaos throughout Italy destabilized and endangered the papacy. In the coming decades, Pope Urban IV would turn to the French Duke Charles of Anjou to restore stability to the Italian peninsula. The Carmelite Order was the only Catholic religious order formed in the Crusader states and was named after Mount Carmel in northern Palestine. In 1251, a Carmelite priest in England named Simon Stock received a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary in which she gave him the brown scapula, promising that those who died wearing the scapula would be saved. In 1258, Michael VIII led the Kingdom of Nicaea to retake Constantinople from the Latin Empire, re-establishing the Byzantine Empire. Michael sought reconciliation with the West, particularly to save the Byzantine Empire from the ambitions of the new King of Sicily, Charles of Anjou. In 1258, Manfred, an illegitimate son of the Holy Roman Emperor, usurped the throne of Sicily. Pope Urban IV saw an opportunity to end the constant wars in Italy by declaring Manfred's rule illegitimate and requesting the intervention of Charles of Anjou, son of the King of France. 
Charles entered Italy with a powerful French army in 1266 and defeated and killed Manfred, allowing Charles to become ruler of the new Kingdom of Naples over southern Italy and Sicily. The Holy Roman Empire dispatched a relief force under Emperor Conradin, last heir of the Hohenstaufen dynasty, but Conradin was defeated and executed by Charles. In the middle of the 13th century, the clear and precise scholastic theology of Dominican friar Thomas Aquinas earned him the nickname the Angelic Doctor. Aquinas emphasized the importance of the intellect over the will. He argued that the human intellect was the highest nature in the created universe, and that humans would come to know God through our intellect. Aquinas resolved the problem of universals with the doctrine of moderate realism, teaching that the human intellect allows the mind to understand universals that truly exist in particulars outside the mind. Aquinas died while on his way to the Council of Leon in 1274. At the Council of Leon in 1274, Byzantine Emperor Michael VIII and Patriarch Germanus of Constantinople agreed to the demands of the Catholic Church. The Pope was recognized as supreme, and the Byzantine Church agreed that the Holy Spirit proceeded from the Father through the Son. The Byzantine people, however, still incensed at the Latins for sacking Constantinople, refused to accept the Council of Leon, despite forceful measures by Emperor Michael to impose it on his people. King Rudolf I of Germany had renounced all Habsburg claims to Rome and Sicily, leaving Charles of Anjou in control of southern Italy and Sicily. Pope Martin IV excommunicated Byzantine Emperor Michael VIII. Charles prepared a fleet to invade Constantinople, but before the invasion could launch, the people of Sicily rebelled in the Sicilian Vespers. Peter III, the King of Aragon, invaded Sicily, and Charles had to abandon his plans to invade Constantinople. The Mongols had conquered Persia by 1221, and in 1258 they captured Baghdad, destroying the Abbasid Caliphate. The Ayyubid Sultanate in Egypt was overthrown by the Mamluks, who allied with the surviving Crusader states of Jerusalem, Tripoli and Antioch against the Mongols. Once the Mongol threat had been reduced, the Mamluks sacked the remaining Crusader states. In response to Aragon's invasion of Sicily, Pope Martin IV called for the Aragonese Crusades, which saw over 100,000 French soldiers under King Philip III, the nephew of Charles of Anjou, invade Spain. Nearly the entire French army was destroyed, and King Philip died. His son Philip IV managed to escape back to France. In 1288, a Nestorian priest from China, Rabban Bar Salma, completed his journey to Rome, where he was welcomed by Pope Nicholas IV and allowed to celebrate Mass in his own liturgical rite. Perhaps the only scholastic rival to Thomas Aquinas was the Franciscan theologian Duns Scotus, who in the late 13th century developed a theology that emphasized God's freedom of will rather than God's intellect, which had been the emphasis of Aquinas. Thus, Scotus introduced the question of voluntarism, whether God's will precedes God's intellect. Although Scotus taught that God's will was always directed towards God's own beauty, subsequent philosophers such as William of Ockham would introduce radical notions of God's freedom of will. Scotus also argued conclusively in favor of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, teaching that Mary was conceived without original sin. Rome soon found that its new French masters were no less troublesome than the Holy Roman Empire. The French monarchy was left on the verge of bankruptcy by the Aragonese Crusade, and King Philip IV, whose father died in the Crusade, taxed the Catholic Church in France as a source of revenue, which set off a conflict with Pope Boniface VIII. King Philip IV called a council to assert the king's rights over the church in France. In 1302, Pope Boniface VIII responded with the papal bull, Unum Sanctum, which declared that the Pope not only held supreme spiritual authority on earth, but also all temporal authority, and that all kings, including Philip, were subject to the Pope. The bull famously states, We declare, we proclaim, we define that it is absolutely necessary for salvation that every human creature be subject to the Roman Pontiff. King Philip IV, was outraged by Unum Sanctum and ordered Pope Boniface to be abducted. The Pope was kidnapped but quickly liberated and died shortly thereafter from his mistreatment in captivity. In 1309, Pope Clement V moved the papal court to Avignon 
near the French border to placate King Philip. The Avignon papacy would last until 1377, when Pope Gregory XI, at the urging of St. Catherine of Siena, returned the papacy to Rome. The Pope and the Holy Roman Emperor had been in a state of almost constant conflict since the investiture controversy of the 11th century. The Avignon papacy now made it clear that France had become the dominant power behind the papacy. Pope John XXII excommunicated Holy Roman Emperor Louis IV in 1324. Louis responded by installing an anti-pope in Rome, and by employing scholars such as Marsilius of Padua to write treatises advocating that the secular monarch rather than the Pope should have supreme authority over the Church. The most brilliant scholar employed by Emperor Louis was Franciscan philosopher William of Ockham, who advanced the philosophies of nominalism and voluntarism. Ockham challenged Aquinas' solution to the problem of universals, arguing that only particulars exist outside the mind, and that universals are the mental substitute for real things, a philosophy known as terminism. Ockham also radically advanced the notion of voluntarism that had been introduced by Duns Scotus, arguing that God was radically free to act in any manner. Ockham went so far as to declare that God could have redeemed the human race by becoming a donkey rather than a man. Ockham became known as the father of epistemology and would have a profound influence on philosophers throughout the second millennium. His followers included Giet Grutte, founder of the Devotio Moderna, and Martin Luther, who started the Protestant Reformation. Ockham fell into conflict with Pope John XXII over the issue of Franciscan poverty and was excommunicated. Meanwhile, in Constantinople, controversy arose when Gregory Palamas, a practitioner of the monastic movement known as Hayschasm, argued that a real distinction exists between God's existence and God's energies. Palamas taught that God interacts with the created world through his uncreated energies. This teaching was ratified by a series of synods at Constantinople from 1341 to 1351. However, Latin scholars condemned the teaching, arguing that the teaching of a real distinction between God's essence and energies amounts to polytheism. King Charles IV of France died without a male heir in 1328. His nearest relative was King Edward III of England, who claimed the French throne. Instead, Philip VI, cousin of Charles, was crowned king. Edward initially accepted Philip, but changed his mind in 1337, setting off the Hundred Years' War. The English fought not only to attain the French throne, but to maintain their substantial land holdings on the continent, in Normandy and Aquitaine. In 1347, Genoese traders fled from an outbreak of the plague in the Crimea, but carried the plague with them to Sicily, from where it spread to all of Europe. The plague killed an estimated 75 to 200 million people, wiping out 30 to 60 percent of Europe's population. In England in the 1370s, a secular college professor, John Wycliffe, began writing criticisms of the church. Similar to Arnold of Brescia 200 years earlier, Wycliffe called for the removal of temporal authority from the clergy and the divestment of the church's wealth. Wycliffe compared the Pope with the Antichrist and argued that the Bible was the only source of authority in the church. He became the first person to translate the Bible into English. His followers became known as Lollards. Wycliffe was posthumously declared a heretic by the Council of Constance in 1415. In China, the Red Turban Rebellion from 1350 to 1368 threw off Mongol rule. The Nestorian Church of the East had been associated with the Mongols and was suppressed following the rebellion. In 1374, a Dutch Roman Catholic deacon named Giet Gruter, a student of William of Ockham, began a public missionary campaign in which he denounced worldly pleasures. Gruter founded the Brethren for the Common Life in 1387, an order of canons regular, priests devoted to public ministry and who lived in community. The heart of this devotio moderna was the search for inner peace based on the denial of one's own self and achieved by ardor and silence. The devotio moderna emphasized solitary meditation on Christ's passion and redemption, on one's own death, the last judgment, heaven and hell. Thomas A. Kempis, author of the popular devotional book The Imitation of Christ, was a priest in the Brethren for Common Life. In 1378, just one year after the end of the Avignon papacy, 
a faction of cardinals rebelled against Pope Urban VI, electing anti-Pope Clement VII in Avignon. Successors of anti-Pope Clement VII continued to claim to be the rightful Pope until 1429. The schism was exacerbated by a council in Pisa in 1409 that elected a second anti-Pope. Migrating Muslims from Persia and the Oghuz Turkish homeland overcame the Seljuks in Anatolia and formed the Ottoman Empire in the 13th century. The Ottomans conquered Anatolia and successfully invaded Eastern Europe, seizing most of Bulgaria, Serbia, Macedonia and the Balkans, leaving Constantinople almost entirely surrounded. Timur, founder of the Timurid Empire, invaded Anatolia in 1403 and decisively defeated the Ottomans at the Battle of Ankara in 1403. The surviving Ottoman factions were thrown into civil war for the following ten years. Timur also defeated the Mamluk Muslims in the Levant and Iraq, leaving his empire as the dominant Muslim power in the Middle East. Timur died in 1405, and his empire disintegrated, leaving the Ottomans and Mamluks to struggle for control of the Middle East. The Western Schism was finally brought to an end when Pope Gregory XII resigned following the Council of Constance in 1415. Gregory died in 1417, and Pope Martin V was elected in his place. The Council of Constance gave rise to the conciliar movement in the 15th century, the doctrine that church councils had more authority than the Pope. The Roman Church never accepted the conciliar movement, and Pope Martin V was quick to assert the supremacy of the Pope over church councils. The Council of Constance had condemned Jan Hus, a Bohemian priest who followed some of the teachings of John Wycliffe, criticised indulgences, and asserted the authority of scripture over the hierarchy of the church. Hus was burned at the stake by the Council of Constance in 1415, and his followers in Bohemia revolted against the Catholic Church. A radical party of Hussites rejected everything that they believed had no basis in the Bible, such as the veneration of saints and images, fasts, intercession for the dead, confession, indulgences, and the sacraments of confirmation and the anointing of the sick. Pope Martin V authorised four crusades against the Hussites, but Hussite leader Jan Ziska defeated all four of them. A series of compromises were negotiated between the moderate Hussites and the Catholic Church over the next century. Anti-Pope Clement VIII in Avignon did not resign until 1429. In 1438, King Charles VII of France issued the Pragmatic Sanction which required a church council with authority superior to that of the Pope to be held every ten years, required election rather than appointment to ecclesiastical offices, prohibited the Pope from bestowing and profiting from benefices, and forbade appeals to Rome from places further than two days' journey. The Pope never accepted the Pragmatic Sanction. Following the end of the Ottoman Civil War, the Ottomans attacked Constantinople, capturing Thessalonica and laying siege to the city in 1422. Byzantine Emperor John VIII visited Pope Eugene IV to ask for help. The Council of Florence met in 1439, attended by Byzantine Emperor John VIII and Patriarch Joseph II of Constantinople, as well as over 700 delegates from various Eastern nations, including Russia, Armenia and Ethiopia. The Byzantines agreed to Catholic demands at the Council, but once again the people of Constantinople refused to accept it. Grand Prince Vasily of the Grand Duchy of Moscow also refused to accept the Council. Sultan Murad II had treated Constantinople as a vassal state until his death in 1451, when his son Mehmed II took the throne and was determined to bring an end to the Byzantine Empire once and for all. Mehmed used the new technology of siege cannons to destroy Constantinople's walls which had defended the city against all would-be conquerors for over a thousand years. On May 29, 1453, the Ottomans breached the city walls, killed Emperor Constantine XI and plundered the city for three days. The Mamluk Sultanate in Egypt survived until 1517, when it was conquered by the Ottoman Empire. French King Charles VII successfully defeated the remaining English possessions in Normandy, bringing an effective end to the Hundred Years' War with his victory at the Battle of Castellon in July 1453. In 1469, Ferdinand II of Aragon wed Catherine I of Castile, uniting the two dynasties and bringing about the Kingdom of Spain. In 1478, Ferdinand and Isabella implemented the Spanish Inquisition, 
charged with investigating suspected heretics. The Inquisition focused primarily on converts from Islam and Judaism, who were suspected of reverting to their former religion. In 1492, Ferdinand and Isabella expelled the Jews from Spain. The expulsion of Muslims from Spain would not come until 1609. While the University of Paris delved ever deeper into fringe questions of scholasticism, Rome and the Italian city-states sought to recover the works of ancient Greek antiquity that were made available through the Crusades and the flight of Greek intellectuals from the advancing Ottoman Empire. These ancient Greek writings introduced new secular humanist modes of thought to Western Europe, such as the maxim of the ancient Greek writer Protagoras, man is the measure of all things. The Renaissance saw Italy's wealthy elite abandon all pretense of religious piety as they indulged in opulent displays of art and architecture. Popular resentment grew throughout Italy against the irreligious nature of the Renaissance. In Florence, Dominican friar Girolamo Savonarola led a revolt and briefly took over the government. Savonarola was excommunicated and publicly executed. Florence remained under the rule of a revolutionary government whose secretary of war was Niccolo Machiavelli. In 1488, Portuguese explorers rounded the Cape of Good Hope for the first time in modern history. In 1492, Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas. These events paved the way for Catholic missionary work across the whole world in the coming centuries. The Italian city-states of Genoa, Venice, Milan, Florence and Pisa had been in an almost constant state of war with each other for several centuries. In the early 16th century, they appealed for intervention from the two largest powers in Europe, France and the Holy Roman Empire. When France sought an alliance with Spain, the Spanish quickly used their holdings in Sicily to take over the Kingdom of Naples. The Pope now found himself caught between three great powers, France, Spain and the Holy Roman Empire. 1500 years after the birth of Jesus, Christianity was fracturing. In Africa and Asia, Nubian Christianity and the Church of the East had shrunk significantly from their former peak. Most of the population in the Greek, Oriental Orthodox and Nestorian churches had rejected the reunion that had been negotiated at the Council of Florence. The Ottoman Empire had conquered all the original apostolic churches other than Rome. Germany, under the influence of writers such as William of Ockham and Jan Hus, had lost respect for the Pope. France had come to view church councils and its king as superior to the Pope, and Italy had fallen into the decadent excesses of the Renaissance. But, even as the old world was abandoning Catholicism, millions of people across the Americas, Africa and Asia stood ready to embrace the Catholic faith in the coming centuries. In 1505, Pope Julius II announced plans to rebuild St. Peter's Basilica. Julius' successor, Pope Leo X, offered indulgences throughout Europe for those who contributed to the basilica's construction. The Renaissance heavily influenced political theory in Europe and increasingly led monarchs to view themselves as superior to the Pope, not only in secular matters, but even in matters of religion. In 1513, Niccolo Machiavelli wrote The Prince, which argued that religion was a man-made tool for princes to use for their own political interests. King Francis I and Pope Leo X negotiated the repeal of the Pragmatic Sanction with the Concordat of Bologna in 1516, which affirmed the Pope's supremacy over church councils, ended the election of French bishops and provided for revenue sharing between the church and the king in France. In 1517, Augustinian monk Martin Luther published 95 theses critical of the practice of selling indulgences. When the Catholic Church condemned Luther's teachings, Luther's criticisms escalated into an attack on the Pope himself. In 1521, following his excommunication by Pope Leo X, Luther called the Pope the Antichrist. Other opponents of the Pope, such as Huldrych Zwingli in Zurich, Switzerland, sprung up across Northern Europe. King Charles I of Spain was elected Holy Roman Emperor in 1519, making him ruler of Spain, the Holy Roman Empire, the Netherlands, Sicily and Naples, the most powerful man in Europe. The forces of the Holy Roman Empire and Spain were heavily involved in the ongoing Italian wars in the first half of the 16th century. In 1527, 
soldiers of the Holy Roman Empire sacked Rome. An estimated 6,000 to 12,000 people were murdered. The population of Rome dropped from 55,000 to a mere 10,000. Pope Clement VII became the prisoner of Emperor Charles V. During the same year, Pope Clement denied a request from King Henry VIII of England for an annulment from his wife Catherine of Aragon, who was the aunt of Charles. To the shock of the Christian world, France allied itself with the Ottoman Empire against the Holy Roman Empire. In 1526, Suleiman the Magnificent, Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, conquered Hungary. In 1529, he laid siege to Vienna, but was repulsed. Suleiman attempted to attack Vienna a second time in 1532, but failed to reach the city. In 1544, Emperor Charles V was forced to concede dominion over Hungary to Suleiman. In 1531, a native Mexican named Juan Diego received a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When Juan Diego's bishop did not believe his story, the Blessed Virgin Mary instructed Juan Diego to gather flowers in his cloak and present them to the bishop. When Juan Diego opened his cloak, an image of the Blessed Virgin was revealed on the cloak, which has been miraculously preserved to the present day. It is the only Marian apparition to have occurred in the Americas. While France, Spain, the Holy Roman Empire and the Ottoman Empire fought for dominance in the south, northern European monarchs left the Catholic Church en masse in the 1530s. In 1531, a group of German princes formed the Schmalkaldic League and left the Roman Catholic Church. England followed suit in 1534, followed by Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Iceland and Greenland in 1536. One of the earliest adherents to the Reformation in France was a lawyer named John Calvin. Calvin was forced to flee France by Catholic authorities. In 1541, he became the leader of the Reformation in Geneva. With the Reformation splintering into Lutheran, Zwinglian, Anabaptist and even anti-Trinitarian sects, Calvin sought to unify Protestantism by writing a comprehensive treatise on the Christian faith, the Institutes of the Christian Religion. Calvin's teachings became widely popular among Protestants in the Netherlands and Scotland, and his disciples were instrumental in bringing the Reformation to France. Calvin continued the philosophical shift away from the intellect and toward the will that had begun with Scotus and Occam, arguing that an individual's faith is a matter of affection rather than intellect, and that God exercised his freedom of will by predestining certain people to hell without the need to give any intellectual justification for doing so. In 1552, Shimon VIII was elected Patriarch of Mosul and leader of the Church of the East in contested circumstances. Pope Julius III approved his election, and Shimon's followers split off from the Church of the East, forming the Chaldean Catholic Church in full communion with Rome. Opponents of Shimon continued to elect a rival Patriarch in schism with the Church of Rome. War broke out between the Schmalkaldic League and Emperor Charles V in 1546. Charles quickly crushed the Schmalkaldic League and sought to impose Roman Catholicism throughout the Holy Roman Empire. In 1552, the Lutheran princes in Germany enlisted the support of King Henry II of France, who, though Catholic, was happy to ally with any enemy of Charles, whether it was the Ottoman Empire or the Lutheran princes. With Henry's support, the Lutheran princes drove Charles out of Germany and he was forced to negotiate the Peace of Augsburg, which established the principle of quius regio, eius religio. Each prince in the Holy Roman Empire was free to decide the religion of his realm. George Wishart, a disciple of Huldrych Zwingli, began preaching Protestantism in Scotland in 1544. He was burned at the stake on the orders of Cardinal David Beaton in 1546. In retaliation, Wishart's followers assassinated Cardinal Beaton later that year. After Henry VIII attempted to invade Scotland, France intervened and protected the Catholic regent Mary of Guise. After Mary died, the French withdrew and the Scottish Parliament adopted a reformed confession of faith. Mary, Queen of Scots, failed to re-establish Catholicism, and her son, James VI, made Protestantism official and outlawed Catholicism. John Knox, a student of John Calvin, was the theological leader of the Scottish Reformation, and the Presbyterian Church would carry on his tradition in the United States in the coming centuries. In 1557, the army of King Philip II of Spain conquered the Papal States up to the walls of Rome, 
forcing Pope Paul IV to surrender to King Philip's demands. The Italian wars concluded in 1559, with France renouncing all of its claims over Italy, leaving Habsburg Spain in a position of dominance over the Italian peninsula. This marked a new era of peace and stability for the papacy, as nearly eight centuries of Italian city-state warfare and invasions from France and the Holy Roman Empire were brought to an end. There had been 41 antipopes in the previous 15 centuries. But since the end of the Italian wars, there has not been a single antipope. The end of the Italian wars allowed the Catholic Church to complete the Council of Trent in 1563, which instituted reforms in Catholic liturgy, music, art and church governance, and placed an emphasis on missions, which were led by the New Society of Jesus, founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola, the Jesuits. In France, followers of Protestantism, known as Huguenots, waged a devastating war led by the House of Conde against the Catholic monarchy, supported by the House of Guise, in the French Wars of Religion from 1562 to 1598, that would claim the lives of more than three million people. In 1598, the wars came to an end when the Edict of Nantes granted the Huguenots substantial religious freedom. The Ottoman Empire captured Cyprus from Venice in 1571. In response, the Holy League, consisting of a navy from Spain, Venice, Sicily, Naples, Genoa and the Papal States, met the Ottoman navy at the Battle of Lepanto. The Ottoman navy was destroyed, securing the western Mediterranean Sea against the Ottoman Empire. Pope Pius V credited the Holy League's victory to the recitation of the Rosary and instituted the Feast of Our Lady of Victory, which is now celebrated as Our Lady of the Rosary. The Ottoman Empire treated all Christians under its domain, regardless of their church affiliation, as a single ethnic group, the Rum Millet. They were given limited religious freedom, subject to a poll tax and subject to the authority of the Patriarch of Constantinople. Russia was the only territory where Eastern Orthodox Christians were not under Ottoman rule. In 1589, Moscow became a Patriarchate independent of Constantinople. In 1595, the Ruthenian church in Kiev broke communion with Constantinople and re-entered into communion with Rome in the Union of Brest. Many Eastern Orthodox members split off and formed a rival church loyal to Constantinople. In the 16th century, Catholic missionaries spread the gospel around the entire world. While Europe's faithful struggled to understand the competing religious sects springing up in the wake of the Reformation, English philosopher Francis Bacon introduced a new branch of philosophy independent of religion, empiricism, the acquisition of knowledge through inductive reasoning and scientific observation of events in nature. Bacon's empiricism would prove highly influential in the scientific revolution of the following centuries. In contrast to Bacon's empiricism, René Descartes explored the limits of what man could know through reason alone. Instead of asking, what is true, Descartes asked, what can I be certain is true? Descartes thus switched the focus of philosophical inquiry from objective truth to personal subjective interpretation. Thus, although Descartes was a devout Catholic who was trying to defend the Christian faith through reason, his work had the unintended effect of opening philosophy to relativism and subjectivism in the coming centuries. In 1618, war broke out between Catholics and Protestants in the Holy Roman Empire. The war drew in every major power in Europe. The war was more destructive than anything Europe had previously seen. Eight million people were killed. Although the war was nominally concluded with the Treaty of Westphalia, which granted additional religious freedoms to Protestants, war between the great powers of Europe would continue with only small interruptions well into the following century. In 1642, conflict with Parliament forced King Charles I of England to flee London. Supporters of Parliament, led by Oliver Cromwell, defeated the King in the ensuing English Civil War, and the King was executed in 1649. Cromwell, a member of the new independent Puritan religious movement, which supported the complete independence of each congregation without any form of church hierarchy, became Lord Protector of England until his death. England had conquered Ireland in 1603, but Ireland refused to abandon the Roman Catholic faith. After Ireland rebelled in 1641, Oliver Cromwell conquered the country from 1649 to 1653. 
Cromwell sought to eliminate all traces of Roman Catholicism in England and Ireland. It is estimated that over 400,000 Roman Catholics in Ireland lost their lives during the conquest. Following the conquest, the public practice of Catholicism was banned and Catholic priests were killed when captured. Descartes had set forth a reasoned proof for the existence of God, but in doing so he laid the foundation for deism, the belief that God, after setting the universe in motion, ceases to interfere in its affairs. In the 17th century, the Jewish-Dutch philosopher Baruch Spinoza went even further and argued that there is no distinction between God and the universe. Spinoza denied the existence of free will and viewed the entire course of the universe, including human actions, as predetermined and unchangeable. In psychology, Spinoza argued that humans were slaves to their emotions and that the intellect could never overcome emotion. Spinoza also introduced critical textual analysis of the Bible and was expelled from his Jewish community for teaching that Moses was not the author of the first five books of the Old Testament. Europe's intellectual and political elite were appalled by the horrific destruction of the Thirty Years' War and the despotic Puritan regime of Oliver Cromwell. To prevent further religious violence, they introduced a milder, non-confrontational version of Christianity. English philosopher John Locke led this movement by offering a new interpretation of the Bible alone, free from tradition. Locke argued that the Bible requires nothing more than for humanity to believe in Jesus as its Redeemer, and that any further details did not warrant dividing into competing denominations. Locke personally held to the growing belief among deists and other intellectual elites in Europe that Jesus Christ was not God, but merely a man who had tried to enlighten humanity. In 1630, the Puritans landed in Massachusetts to form a city on a hill. In 1632, Lord Baltimore, a Roman Catholic, received a commission from King Charles I to form the Colony of Maryland, which he established as a haven for Catholics in the New World. Since the time of the Crusades, Franciscan missionaries had been working in Syria and Palestine. In 1662, Andrew Akijan was elected Syriac Orthodox Patriarch of Antioch and restored communion with Rome in 1663. This provoked a split in the community, and the Ottoman government supported the Syriac Orthodox Church against the Syriac Catholics and prevented additional Catholic patriarchs from being elected. Lutheran and Calvinist reformers had attempted to join forces with the Eastern Orthodox churches against Rome. The Eastern Orthodox initially rejected the reformers' teachings as modern innovations, but in 1629, a Calvinist manifesto was circulated in Geneva that claimed to be authored by Patriarch Cyril Lucaris of Constantinople, in 1672, the Eastern Orthodox churches held a synod at Jerusalem that condemned Calvinism as heretical and affirmed that in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, the bread and wine are transubstantiated into the true body and blood of Jesus Christ. From 1673 to 1675, a French nun named Margaret Mary Alacoque received visions of Jesus Christ in which he asked to be honoured under the figure of his heart and by Eucharistic adoration during Holy Hour on Thursdays and the reception of Holy Communion on the first Friday of each month. In the second half of the 17th century, a group of Lutherans in Germany sought to introduce a deeper sense of piety and devotion in the individual believer. This pietist movement quickly spread throughout Germany, but it was opposed by the Lutheran hierarchy because it treated doctrine as a secondary matter to the practice of the Christian faith and thus allowed for a certain indifference to variations in doctrine. The Pietist movement would have a strong influence on John Wesley and the American Great Awakening in the 18th century. The Ottoman Empire's final assault on Central Europe was defeated at the Battle of Vienna by forces of the Holy Roman Empire, Poland and the Holy League. In the coming centuries, the Austrian Habsburgs reconquered much of Eastern Europe and the Balkans. Ever since France had lost its grip on the papacy following the end of the Western Schism, the French monarch and many of the French clergy had favoured a new movement called Gallicanism, which sought to limit interference from the Pope in spiritual and secular affairs. The Gallican movement emphasised the absolute power of the king over the church in France and declared that the Pope did not have authority to act without the church's consent. King Louis XIV of France favoured Gallicanism, but as a concession to the Pope issued the Edict of Fontainebleau in 1685, which revoked the Edict of Nantes and outlawed Protestantism. In the resulting persecution, 
hundreds of thousands of Huguenots left the country. In 1686, Louis XIV claimed that out of an original Huguenot population of 800,000 to 900,000, only 1,000 to 1,500 remained in France. France soon became embroiled in wars against the Netherlands, the Holy Roman Empire, England and Spain. In the War of Spanish Succession and the War of the Quadruple Alliance, Spain ceded control of its Italian possessions, and Austria acquired Sardinia, Naples and Milan. Italy, and in particular Rome, remained largely at peace throughout this time. In 1724, Cyril VI Tanas became the Greek Melkite Patriarch of Antioch and sought reunion with the Pope. In 1729, Pope Benedict XIII recognised Cyril as Patriarch of Antioch, Patriarch Jeremias III of Constantinople declared Cyril's election to be invalid, excommunicated him, and ordained a deacon, Sylvester of Antioch, then appointed Sylvester to the Patriarchal See of Antioch. Jeremias and Sylvester began a campaign of persecution against Cyril and the Melkite faithful who supported him, enforced by Ottoman Turkish troops. In 1733, Abdallah Zakir set up the first printing press in the Middle East, at a Melkite Catholic monastery in Mount Lebanon. The printing press used Arabic movable type. The 18th century saw philosophy make a complete break with religion through the Enlightenment, which emphasised empiricism, rationalism and scepticism. French philosopher Voltaire argued for a society based on reason rather than religious dogma. Scottish philosopher David Hume rejected both the rationalism of René Descartes and the empiricism of John Locke. Hume taught a philosophy of extreme scepticism, arguing that human knowledge is nothing more than a bundle of sensations. Like Spinoza, Hume taught that humans are slaves to their emotions. German philosopher Immanuel Kant sought to reconcile the schools of rationalism, empiricism and scepticism, creating the new philosophical school of idealism. Kant severed the final remaining links between theology and metaphysics by denying that the existence of God could be proved through human reason. Kant accordingly consigned religion to an entirely separate sphere from philosophy and argued that religion should be based on a pure moral disposition of the heart rather than ritual, ceremony and hierarchy. The cold scepticism of the Enlightenment sparked a reaction in the form of a great awakening of religious fervour in the American colonies. In 1731, Jonathan Edwards delivered a public sermon in Boston that attacked Arminianism the doctrine that man must cooperate with God's grace to come to faith and salvation. Edwards declared that it was mere and arbitrary grace for God to grant any person the faith necessary for salvation. Edwards' sermon sparked a wave of powerful preaching that gave listeners a sense of deep personal need for salvation by Jesus Christ. The Great Awakening pulled away from ritual sacraments and hierarchy, and focused on the direct relationship between the individual believer and Jesus Christ. The movement greatly increased membership in the fledgling Baptist and Methodist denominations in the American colonies. In the 1730s in England, John Wesley began the practice of open-air preaching and meeting in small groups in an effort to revitalise the Anglican Church. His followers were soon called Methodists and spread to the United States. Following the American Revolutionary War, the Anglican Church had few ministers in the United States and was not ordaining new ones so John Wesley granted Thomas Cook the authority to ordain Methodist ministers in America. Because Wesley and Cook were not bishops, the Anglican Church refused to recognise the ministers they ordained, leading to the split between the Methodist Church and the Anglican Church. Europe's major powers clashed in the Seven Years' War, which led to the loss of multiple overseas colonies by France and Spain, and led to the eventual partition and dissolution of Poland. The fighting generally did not involve Italy or Rome, which remained at peace under Austrian rule. In 1782, Mar Ignatius Michael III was elected Syriac Orthodox Patriarch of Antioch after professing a Catholic definition of faith, re-establishing the line of Syriac Catholic Patriarchs that continues down to the present day. The Myophysite faction of the Syriac Orthodox Church did not accept the election. The French Revolution was particularly hostile toward religion. The revolution adopted an anti-Christian cult of reason as its official religion, followed by the cult of the supreme being. Catholic priests and nuns were among those targeted by the revolutionaries. In the wake of the French Revolution, the French clergy abandoned Gallicanism, 
and embrace the Pope as their protector. With the philosophers of the Enlightenment claiming for themselves a monopoly on human intellect and reason, the Second Great Awakening in the United States provided an outlet for Christians who were put off by the cold and skeptical rationalism of the Enlightenment. The Second Great Awakening appealed to emotionalism and the supernatural, and attracted new members to Baptist and Methodist congregations. Italy's 237-year period of peace under Spanish and Austrian rule came to an end with Napoleon's conquest of Italy in 1796. In 1798, French troops captured Rome and took Pope Pius VI prisoner. He died the following year. Napoleon defeated the forces of the Holy Roman Empire in 1806, leading to its dissolution. Vienna became the capital of the new Austrian Empire. French troops occupied Rome again in 1808, and Napoleon declared that he was seizing the Papal States. In response, Pope Pius VII excommunicated Napoleon. French troops took Pope Pius prisoner and exiled him to Savona in northwest Italy. Napoleon abdicated in April 1814, and Pope Pius was released, being welcomed back in Rome as a hero. Although Austria received back its Italian territories, the peninsula was now ripe for a nationalist unification movement. In 1830, a French nun named Catherine Labour received a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary, in which she was told to construct a medal showing on one side an image of Mary standing on a globe and crushing a serpent beneath her feet with rays shooting out of her hands. She is surrounded by the words, O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. On the other side is a cross and bar surmounting the letter M, the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary surrounded by twelve stars. The Blessed Virgin Mary promised that all who wear the medal will receive great graces. The Russian Empire had absorbed Poland and Ukraine in the 17th and 18th centuries. Both countries had large Catholic populations. In November 1831, Poland rebelled against Russian rule. Russia crushed the rebellion and blamed it on Catholic instigators, and undertook harsh measures to force Catholics in Poland and Ukraine to convert to Russian Orthodoxy. In 1848, revolutionaries in Rome protesting Austrian occupation of Italy seized control of the city and forced Pope Pius IX to flee the city in disguise. One year later, French troops entered Rome and restored the Pope's authority over the Papal States. Although the Jesuits had been initially welcomed in China, they began to experience persecution in the 17th century. Catholicism was introduced to Korea in the 18th century by converts from China, but in the 19th century the Catholic Church was persecuted by the Korean government for its prohibition of ancestor worship. Saint Francis Xavier had brought Catholicism to Japan in the 16th century, but the church was soon forced underground by the Japanese government. The Catholic Church survived underground in Japan for 250 years until Catholicism was legalized in 1858. In England, Anglican priest John Henry Newman converted to Catholicism in 1849. In 1850, Pope Pius IX reinstituted the Catholic hierarchy in England. In 1854, Pope Pius IX issued the papal bull Ineffabilis, which stated, we declare, pronounce, and define that the doctrine which asserts that the Blessed Virgin Mary from the first moment of her conception, by a singular grace and privilege of Almighty God, and in view of the merits of Jesus Christ, Saviour of the human race, was preserved free from every stain of original sin, is a doctrine revealed by God, and for this reason must be firmly and constantly believed by all the faithful. In 1858, a young peasant girl named Bernadette Subiros received visions of the Blessed Virgin Mary at a cave in Lourdes, France. Mary told Bernadette, I am the Immaculate Conception, confirming the bull of Pope Pius IX four years earlier. A spring flowing from the cave has become the site of millions of pilgrims each year, many of whom have reported miraculous cures to physical ailments. In the early 19th century, German philosopher Heinrich Jacobi argued that the idealist philosophy of Immanuel Kent when taken to its logical conclusion, resulted in nihilism, the absence of any meaning or value in life or the universe. Danish philosopher Søren Kierkegaard lamented that the uniformity and apathy of the modern world led to a lack of meaning, purpose or value in life. German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche 
believed that scientific advances showing that man is the product of evolution and that Earth has no special place in the universe had exposed Christianity as a lie, with the result that humans now found themselves in a world without meaning or purpose. Nietzsche lamented, the world is not as it ought to be, and the world as it ought to be does not exist. While Europe's intellectual elite had all but abandoned Christianity by the 19th century, the United States saw a frenzy of new religious movements, such as Adventism, Restorationism, the Holiness Movement, Mormonism, Dispensationalism, and the Watchtower Society. As the number of divisions and denominations in Protestantism continued to grow with each passing decade, leaders of mainline Protestant denominations sought to find interdenominational unity by placing less emphasis on doctrine. They championed the idea that the essential teachings of Christianity are summed up in a few great simple truths that are clearly expressed in Scripture, and thus it makes little difference to which particular denomination a person belongs. In 1864, to protect the Catholic Church from the modernist indifferentism that was sweeping through Europe, Pope Pius IX published The Syllabus of Errors, which condemned 80 propositions of modernist philosophical, political and religious thought including the separation of church and state, and the notion that every man is free to follow that religion which he believes to be true. In 1870, the First Vatican Council declared that the Pope is infallible when, in the exercise of his office as shepherd and teacher of all Christians, in virtue of his supreme apostolic authority, he defines a doctrine concerning faith or morals to be held by the whole church. In 1861, King Victor Emmanuel II of Piedmont completed the unification of the Italian peninsula as the Kingdom of Italy, but Rome was still under the temporal rule of the Pope. Finally, in 1870, soldiers of the new Italian kingdom breached the Aurelian walls and stormed the city. Pope Pius IX was left a prisoner inside the Vatican. The 19th century saw a new wave of colonialism in Africa, Asia and Australia led by England, France, Belgium and Germany. Each group of colonists brought their own denominational preference to the people they colonised. Following the fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Empire in 1453, the Patriarch of Constantinople held authority over Christians in Eastern Europe and Russia. Russia acquired independence from Constantinople as its own autocephalous patriarchate in 1589. Late in the 19th century, as Eastern Europe was liberated from the Ottoman Empire, the new independent nation-states demanded independence from Constantinople as autocephalous churches. From 1833 to 1951, autocephalous status was claimed by Greece, Bulgaria, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Romania, Georgia, Estonia, Albania, Poland and Czechoslovakia. In the 19th century, Spain's colonies in Latin America and the Pacific won their independence in wars of revolution. In many colonies, the Catholic Church was associated with the Spanish colonizers and became the focus of attack from leaders of the rebellions, particularly in Mexico. From 1894 to 1923, the Ottoman Empire carried out a series of horrific genocides, targeting Greek, Assyrian and Armenian Christians in its territory. At least 450,000 Greek, 150,000 Assyrian and 1.5 million Armenian Christians were murdered. In 1917, three children in Fatima, Portugal, received a series of visions of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Blessed Virgin Mary asked the children to devote themselves to the Holy Trinity and to pray the Rosary every day to end World War I and bring peace to the world. Over 10,000 pilgrims flocked to the site of the visions and reported seeing a miraculous movement of the sun in the sky. Following the overthrow of Tsar Nicholas II during World War I, the Bolsheviks showed no restraint in persecuting Christians in the Soviet Union. Hundreds of bishops, priests, monks and nuns in major cities were murdered, nearly all the country's monasteries and convents were liquidated, and there were widespread mass executions of monks and nuns throughout the country. Following the Mexican Revolution from 1910 to 1920, the government of Mexico instituted oppressive measures against Catholics, which led to the Cristero Rebellion from 1926 to 1929. Even following the negotiated peace settlements, the secular government continued its oppressive measures against Catholics. Between 1926 and 1934, at least 40 priests were killed. There were 4,500 priests serving the people before the rebellion, 
but by 1934, there were only 334 priests licensed by the government to serve 15 million people in Mexico. By 1935, 17 states had no priests at all. In 1929, the Kingdom of Italy and Pope Pius XI negotiated the Lateran Treaty, which recognized the full sovereignty of the Holy See in the state of Vatican City. In 1924, a young girl in Poland named Maria Faustina received a vision of Jesus Christ. She immediately joined a convent as a nun and continued to receive visions of Jesus over the next decade. Jesus instructed her to begin a devotion in the Church to the Divine Mercy. In the year 2000, Pope John Paul II instituted the Feast of the Divine Mercy to be celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. In 1937, Pope Pius XII smuggled 300,000 copies of the papal decree Mit Brennen der Sorge into Nazi Germany. The decree condemned the rampant racism and idolatry of the state in Nazi Germany. Pius took the rare step of writing the decree in German rather than Latin, and Catholic priests read the decree in parishes throughout Germany on Palm Sunday 1937. An infuriated Hitler ordered hundreds of Catholics, priests and monks arrested while the Gestapo ransacked Catholic churches. Joseph Goebbels remarked, After the war, the church question has to be solved. There is an insoluble opposition between the Christian and a heroic German worldview. Despite numerous requests from Pope Pius XII to have Rome declared an open city during World War II, Rome was bombed repeatedly by German, American and English air forces. After Italy surrendered to the Allies in 1943, Rome was occupied by Nazi Germany. Hugh O'Flattery, an Irish priest at the Vatican, organized an underground network to hide Jews and escaped Allied prisoners from the Nazis. When the Nazis learned about O'Flattery's activities, the head of the Gestapo in Rome ordered a white line painted at the entrance to St. Peter's Basilica, with orders to shoot O'Flattery if he crossed it. The United States Army captured Rome on June 4, 1944. Nihilism gave way to existentialism following World War II. Jean-Paul Sartre declared that humans have no creator, no essence, and must learn through experience, alone and free, how to be authentic in a world of oppressive conformity. Meanwhile, Albert Camus posed the question, given that life is inherently meaningless, what kind of life is preferable to suicide? On November 1, 1950, Pope Pius XII issued the Apostolic Constitution Munificentissimus Deus, which stated, By the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and by our own authority, we pronounce, declare, and define it to be a divinely revealed dogma, that the Immaculate Mother of God, the ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. The 20th century saw the introduction of more religious movements and denominations in the United States, such as Pentecostals, Fundamentalists, Evangelicals, Charismatics, and the Emerging Church, while mainline Protestant denominations went through various mergers and divisions. In the 1960s, the Second Vatican Council sought to reform the Catholic Church in light of a rapidly changing world, introducing reforms in liturgy and placing a new emphasis on ecumenism. In 1964, Pope Paul VI met Patriarch Athenagoras I of Constantinople in Jerusalem, the first such meeting since the Council of Florence in 1439. In 1971, Pope Paul VI met more and more Ignatius Jakub III, Syriac Orthodox Patriarch of Antioch and all the East, the first such meeting since before the Council of Chalcedon in the year 451. In 1973, Coptic Pope Shinauda III of Alexandria visited Pope Paul VI in Rome, the first such meeting since before the Council of Chalcedon in the year 451.
In 1984, Patriarch Mar Dinka IV of the Church of the East visited Pope John Paul II in Rome, the first such meeting in history. In 2017, Pope Francis of Rome met Pope Tawadros II of Alexandria and Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople in Cairo, Egypt. Pope Francis and Pope Tawadros agreed for the first time in history that the Catholic and Coptic churches would recognize the baptisms of each other's members. <laughs> 